and welcome to Captains of Industry. Today we have a very special guest, in fact, the truest member of the Captains of Industry Club. He has over 50 years in aviation. That makes him the realest captain of industry that I think I've ever met. He has 34 years working for Ethiopian Airlines before becoming the CEO from 2004 to 2011. And since then, he has been advising on different boards and also advising different governments around the continent, including working with Rhonda Air. So I would like to introduce you now to our feature for today. It is Garma Wake. How are you? Thank you so much for meeting Very me. Good. Thank you for inviting me. I want to talk about your career. It, you were talking to me about how it spanned over 54 years, around 54 years in the aviation industry. The first thing I thought when you said that is that you must have such a passion for this industry. I want to just talk about your journey. How did you get here? What was your earliest spark of interest in the aviation industry? I got into the aviation industry uh, by coincidence. I was a student at the university and the airline was recruiting pilots. And some of my friends uh, wanted to to, uh, to go and, and take the test. I had no intention, but they said, it's a, it's, a, it's a Christmas break, let's go. So I went to them and uh, I've never, never taken any exam for, for a job before that. So I took the exam. I passed the exam, and they said, ah, we'll take you for a test flight. And I said, maybe maybe it's it's a good thing to, to see how to fly. So I went in, they said, ah, you'll make a good pilot. You can join the airline. And I said, what? I didn't tell my parents, nobody of my friends knew. I went there. But they were wrong. I, I could not make a good pilot. After, after now, now seven months of flying, I had to leave, drop out of the uh, flying school and went into commercial. So it was just by coincidence that I joined an airline. But once I joined, I couldn't leave. Because one, I loved the job. Number two, I joined the airline at the time when it was managed by American, uh, Ameri uh, Americans. And the Ethiopian government was encouraging young people to, to remain in the airline and gradually take over. So we were given a lot of opportunities to go abroad and get training, to, 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 to visit other airlines. And since I was a young man, I enjoyed uh, the courses, I enjoyed uh, going to different places, visiting different places. So I stay put. That is how I continued with the airline. Then I worked for the airline for 27 years. After 27 years, I left the airline and went to another airline, to Gulf Air. I worked for Gulf Air for uh, about nine years. Uh, in between, I also worked for DHL for two years. Actually, I was seconded to, to DHL from Gulf Air. But then when Gulf Air recalled me, I went back to Gulf Air. And uh, that is uh, when I was called back to Ethiopia in 2004 to be the CEO of the airline. So I enjoyed it all the way. So I, I want to know a bit about because I know you said it was totally by chance that you had gone and done the test with your friends, but what did you enjoy doing at that time? What did you like doing? I, I wanna know a bit more about where your, your head was at at that time because you went in by chance, but you stayed for 27 years there. Uh, when I was a student, you know, during my days, you either want to be a doctor or an engineer or a banker or a teacher. I, 
at, at one I was saying to myself, no, because I was also sportive, I wanted to join the army. I wanted to go to the uh, military academy. But my teacher, my head uh, teacher, when I was talking to the interviewers of the academy, they go to schools to, to recruit students. He called me out and he said, you are not going to go to the military. You have got to go to college. Wow. I, he insisted. So even though my desire was to be a military, I think he, he convinced me that I should, I should, I should continue for uh, higher education. That is how I went there. After working for two, for two years, I was given a very fast promotion to be a trainer within the airline. And as I was, as an instructor, I had to really cover different fields of the airline activities, actually commercial activities. Uh, ticketing, reservations, uh, handling of passengers, uh, controlling capacity, revenue management, and so on and so forth. And all these were fascinating for me. If God calls me and says, I will recreate you, what do you want to be? I will still tell him I want to be in aviation. Oh my goodness. Well, so I, mean, I love it so much. That is definitely a passion. Yes, yes. You spoke about um, one sort of influence in your life, but I do want to know, did you have any other mentors throughout your career that really helped to give you that extra push or who really helped to uh, inspire you? You know, when I joined the training department, uh, most of the instructors were, were non-Ethiopians. But we had few Ethiopian instructors uh, who were my senior, uh, mostly in technical and pilot training. So they were encouraging me to, to, to really take different courses and master the commercial activities. And I think I also enjoyed it. So I kept on taking courses, I kept on teaching courses, and when I was instructing people, it gave me the opportunity to really help people understand the job. And in the process, I also get the pleasure of, of, of uh, continuing in the job. Now we see you are uh, lending your expertise to governments, you're sitting on, on uh, several different boards. What would you say are some of the sort of pivotal moments in your career up until now? The first one is when I joined from the university without, without even thinking about it. The second is I was assigned as country manager in different parts of, of the world. Uh, first in Ghana, then in Tanzania, then in Europe, uh, Germany. And really that opened my horizon completely. And instead of just being satisfied with sitting in Addis, I, that gave me an opportunity to appreciate the world. And I and by, 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 uh, by then, I had children. And my children went to different countries and they started getting used to living in different countries. And I see my children speaking different languages, appreciating different cultures. That gave me an incentive to stay. Did you have a moment, any moment, because we know that you have the passion You've been there, but did you have a moment where you thought to yourself, maybe this isn't the place that I want to be in? Surprisingly, no. There were times when, when you feel bad, but that actually encouraged me to do more to stay. So for me, the option of living, aviation was, was very low. Was even when I left Ethiopian Airlines for, uh, some, for some reason, 
I still went to an airline, Gulf Air. So I, I didn't want to go out of aviation. Even when I went to Dutch DHL, I, at first I did not look at DHL as an aviation uh, organization. But the job I was doing was an aviation within DHL. So I, I, I enjoyed it. When you were uh, called back, because this is, this is what um, I've read, that you were actually called back to come back and serve again with Ethiopian Airlines, uh, did you think to yourself, you know, I've gone out, I've moved around, I've, I've done different things. Did you think twice before going back? Or I were did. you... Uh, I did. In fact, uh, my intention was not to accept the job. The reason is there were people, when I left the airline for over 10 years, there were people who stayed there who were building their, their career in the airline. And I didn't want to go out and then come back and take away their opportunity. So I insisted I, don't, I didn't want the job. But then the board of the airline, including the chairperson, convinced me that my service was needed at that time because I would have to help somehow the young people to, to really uh, get enough experience in the airline. And they said, at least come and serve for five years. It's then that I said, okay, I will. And I came back, but on condition. The conditions I made is, you are not going to tell me what airplane to buy. You are not going to tell me where to fly. You are not going to tell me whom to hire, whom to fire, whom to promote, whom to demote my way i would do it my way but since this is a national career and it's a property of the government i'll give you my plan for every year you look at the plan if, the, if you want something included you 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 add your views if i can do it i will take it if i cannot do it i'll tell you why i cannot do it and then i give you progress report every three months if, if you have anything that you don't like in that, you can tell me during that discussion. But no interference in day-to-day -day running. That's how you know that they really wanted you to be there. They, they, they took your terms. They agreed. And to be very honest, they kept their word. Wow. They really kept their word. It's very rare for government to promise, put you in a job and keep the word. And they did that? They did. For you? Oh, yes, they did. Grandma, we're going to take a very quick break, and then we'll be right back with more Captains of Industry. Welcome back to Captains of Industry. We are here with Gurma. He is a wake, uh, pardon me, and he is a definite captain of industry with over 50 years in aviation. We are discussing about, of course, his early career and where we are now. So just before the break, you were telling me that, you know, you went back to Ethiopian Airlines uh, with conditions and luckily those conditions were met. Um, now, we know that you served from 2004 to 2011, but since then, you have stayed in the industry. One of the things that I really want to talk about, um, you know, the aviation industry in Africa is quite young, which means that when you are a leader in this industry, you really have to know how to innovate, come up with solutions. And something um, that we're hearing a lot about right now is SATAM, the single uh, African air transit uh, market. And then we're also hearing a lot about um, different things like opening up the borders and a new alliance that may be formed um, that's in consideration right now. I want to know your thoughts on that, but before that, I want to know, um, do you have any innovations that you had to come up with that you're particularly proud of or some that maybe even defined your career? When I came back to Ethiopian Airlines, uh, Ethiopian Airlines has been in aviation for many years. When I came back to the airline, it was already 60 years old. Uh, 
It is a profitable airline. But we are growing, we are very happy when we grow 5-6%. And if you don't lose and you grow 5-6%, you exist. That, to me, especially after seeing the, the Gulf carriers, how they grow, to me that was too low. And if we continue like that, at some point I knew we'll die. So we decided, sat with the board, discussed, studied the market, they did uh, an evaluation, uh, by, by, by a consultant, and we came with a strategy. And that strategy was, when I took over, the yearly passenger traffic was 1.2 million passengers. 60 years, the furthest we reached was 1.2 million. And our revenue was about 350, 300, I think $390 million dollars. To compete in the international market, you have to be much bigger than this. So we said, okay, we came up with a five-year strategy. And that five-year strategy, by the end of the, fi in five years, we said we have to be a billion dollar airline five years. from 390 to a billion dollar in five years in five years wow and we said our passenger number from 1.2 that we managed to achieve over 50 60 years would we'll take it to 3 million passengers and our destinations would increase our aircraft would increase so we came up with this plan to support this plan, we had to do a lot of things. We had to talk to the staff, we had to introduce uh, IT that did not exist before. So we got in and everybody thought this is crazy. In, in, in four years, we met all of them. Mm. Not five, in four years. Then, we sat down and our growth was per year, you know, from the five, four, five percent that we were used to was 20 and plus every year. So by the end of four years, we made, we made a revenue of 1.2 million, or billion, mm. not 1 billion, but 1.2. Uh, we we had 3.3 uh, 3 million passengers already on the fourth year, and our destinations grew. But we also realized there are things that should have been done, done better. Like we are getting to get to get to get to that number, we had to lease airplanes from everywhere. None of our airplane, airplanes looked uh -huh. looked the same. They uh -huh. may be 737, but inside they look different. We said no. Now we have to have a long-term strategy because if you go into a market, you don't just get out and buy airplane. So we came up with a 15-year strategy, which will allow us to plan the fleet that we want, the routes that we want, the training capacity building that we want, because without people you cannot do that. And you have to be able to train people to be able to carry that type of load. So we came up with what we call 2025. We prepared it in-house, and that is the, the strategy that the airline is, is following until now. We all did it together. And that also helped us to modernize our fleet yeah. and to also upgrade our training academy, our uh, facilities, and so on and so forth. Today, I'm happy the airline is growing. It is way beyond what we expected. What we planned for 2025, they are likely to achieve it by 2021, 22. Wow. So they are doing very well. 
I mean, I suppose the question is, how did they let you leave <laughs> when you left in 2011? When I came back to Ethiopian Airlines, I promised the government I will only stay five years. But then they pushed me to, to until we finish the 20, the start the 20, uh, the 15 year strategy. Well, when we finished that and that was approved, I said, this new strategy should be started by a younger person who is already part mm. of, of this airline and they has contributed a lot to this. Therefore, I said, now the airline does not need an old blood, it requires a new blood. And that is how I left. But you still serve on the board for Ethiopian? I just rejoined, I just joined the board. Again? Yes. So tell me, what are your thoughts on SATAM, on the single uh, African air transit SATAM market? is YD in a new dress. It is something that we have been looking for for 30 years. We are lucky we have it. It is the best thing that can happen into African, uh, to African aviation. And it is an opportunity that the airlines, the governments, the airport authorities, all should seize this opportunity. Get on board. And, 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 and get on board. It is, it is what really brings the Africa we want. Right. I mean, it seems as though liberalizing, opening up, it seems like a, a simple-ish answer that would kind of, you know, help us to grow so much quicker. Um, I guess the question is, why are there so many delays? Why are it seemingly some of the member states sort of dragging their feet with sending reports, etc.? One is lack of knowledge, lack of appreciation of what Saturn means. The other is petty mentality. There are small CEOs who want their, their market protected for them. They think if, if somebody comes in, they will die. In business, when you get into a mass business, your, your chances of growing is much better. People want to, to, to really do what they are used to. They would have, their horizon has not been opened. Right. And because the carriers are crying, some of the governments, just to help them, are, are, are trying to, to hold back Saturn. But it has now reached a point where it cannot be held back. It's the time. And what is your thoughts on, I know you were saying that you're definitely for, um, and, and you're sitting on the board of Rwanda Air, or you used to sit on the board of Rwanda Air, and of course Rwanda Air is for this as well. Uh, the alliance that, that hopefully will be formed soon, what are your thoughts? I think it is a good thing, because I always believe if your neighbor is doing better than you, it's good for you because then you have something to look up to. If everybody is, if, if you are sitting in the middle of beggars, you, 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 that becomes the norm. Right. But when you see somebody doing much better than you, you strive to reach that. And I think it, we are at the stage where we'll have to change our mentality of growth. Yes, it has to be sustainable. We have to do what we can economically do. But what we can economically do has no limit if our vision is bigger. Because money is there, business is there. Right. It's just a matter of trying to see it. If you close, you don't see it. Right. And we see that when we look at the, the global market um, in air transit and where we are now, I mean, it's, it's it no is, comparison. We have progressed a lot, but we can do much better, much, much better. Together? Yes. 
I want to know, you know, you mentioned when you were leaving Ethiopian Airlines as a CEO that you felt that it was time for a younger person who had already been putting in the work um, to sort of take the helm. What do you have to sort of say to people who are in the industry now with all of the things that are happening, all the changes that are taking place? What do you have to say to the leaders that are there now? They are lucky. They are at a time when where growth is a must. And if they do the right thing, they will grow, they will grow their industry and their, their countries will benefit. So they should really join the train. This has been really enlightening. Thank you so much, Thank Gurma. You. You're an inspiration to many young people who are in uh, the aviation world now. We're looking forward to all the innovations that are happening. We're happy that you've been there to sort of set us off in the right uh, direction. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank you. Gurma Wake. Over 50 years in the aviation industry, his highs, his lows, definitely an inspiration for all of us. We have to see where this whole industry is going to take off to next. Anyway, that's all from me. My name is Makeda Mahario, and this has been Captains of Industry.